way. Yeah. I, yeah. I know. It's been a long, beautiful friendship. Well, you know, you're like a little sister to me. Yeah. I know. And so you're like a big sister to me, too. So you need the world to me to be here. Thank you. It's very special. I love you. I met Suzanne on the subway 30 years ago, and it was, you know, an immediate sense of knowing her. And we started working right away, and she really became like an alter ego for me, like a younger self. And in fact, when I had one of her photos of her sitting in the chair up in my studio after that, the FedEx man would come in and say, oh, Miss Tennyson, I love that portrait of you. And so I never told him it wasn't me. The first uh, time I photographed Suzanne was with the Polaroid. And I know that she had never seen a camera that big and had, you know, was just really so transfixed by the magic. I got a grant from Polaroid to uh, work with the big Polaroid in New York City. And it just worked out perfectly in my life. I had just uh, come from Washington, D.C., where I had been teaching um, art at the Corcoran School of Art, and I'd come to New York to spread my wings and to enlarge my vision, and that was my dream, and to photograph people's essence, people's inner life, and by doing that, as Carl Jung said, what is deeply personal is most universal in the end, and so I, I really believe that and still believe that. It was quite courageous to, to leave your life behind, to describe that process of what you had and what you gave up to, to come to New York. Well, I did, you know, in retrospect, uh, leave so much, and I don't know how I had the courage to do it, because I had a wonderful teaching job at the Corcoran School of Art, and I had published two books, and I had, a, you know, a very good reputation and had, had shown at the Corcoran Gallery in a one-person show. and. So I was leaving a lot behind, but there was something inside me that was dying, and I felt that. I felt that I needed to go to a bigger arena, and I, I needed to spread my wings, and I had a vision of doing work that had a kind of transcendence. And as soon as I got to New York, I had a grant, almost by divine intervention, from the Polaroid studio to use the big camera. And the first day I worked on it, may have been with Suzanne. Um, it certainly was very early. Maybe I had a couple days where I was testing and then I met Suzanne on the subway and you know immediately asked if she wanted to work with me and we did all of that for a trade, you know, print trade. It was a very loose kind of relationship and uh, I really collaborated with her and told her I wanted to do something that I felt I had never done before which was to really show someone's essence on film and the intimacy of that circle that goes between the photographer, the subject, and the audience that eventually sees it. And so that photograph of Suzanne in the chair, for example, uh, has had a huge audience in almost every country uh, in the world. And so it must have transcended in some way. And I'm just so thrilled today to be here 30 years later. Before I photograph anyone, I really try to see beyond their surface and see some interesting qualities about them, both physically and spiritually, mentally as well, of course. And Suzanne had such an interesting back, and she was perfectly comfortable being um, nude in front of the camera. And so I wanted to show this shape of her back and she had such a penetrating gaze that I wanted to show that and so I had the idea of using this uh, cheesecloth and building a chair actually from a folding chair um, and just putting the muslin on it and she just leaned over and made that position spontaneously and I had her look into the camera and it was it was amazing. I did several of these shots. One, the first one, I thought she looked a little too vulnerable. So I said, okay, let's show them some 
of that inner power I know you have. And so the second one was a little bit more powerful, but they're very, very similar. And it's interesting because yesterday we uh, photographed Suzanne in the same position and it really, uh, you know, she hasn't changed that much, but it's, it's, it's an, it was uh, so exciting to see the difference 30 years can make. One of my favorite images that Joyce did was the shark straw picture because at the time we hadn't done anything with my face so strong and, and the frame of the shark straw just made it even that much stronger. It was just the most powerful picture. The minute I saw the jar I felt it was kind of a metaphor for the pain women go through daily to look beautiful. So in a way that was a metaphor for this ritual that I think women around the world all play into. Of course, we want to look. We want to look great. The reason Suzanne really said she liked this the most was she feels she has a powerful uh, uh, energy in this picture, and I agree with her. And it's been one of my favorites as well because she has an. It's an inner power. It's not an ego-driven power, uh, and I think that's unusual. This is a, a photograph that both Suzanne and I like very much and is the cover of a new book of mine called Grace, Unseen Polaroids, because I did go back uh, last summer after 30 years of working uh, with Polaroid and show some images that had never been published or seen. So, and this is the cover. I chose this as a cover because it's a position that uniquely Suzanne can make because she is a contortionist and I use the light writing which is a technique I think I might have used first um, in photography long before Photoshop and beamed a laser into the lens as a second uh, double exposure in the dark and it makes a wonderful I think strong frame to her face and I think it really shows her, her depth and her inner power and spirit. I think with, with doing some of the photographs, especially the, the ones that were the double exposure, you're not really clear what they're going to look like. So it's, it's kind of foreign. It's kind of a strange feeling to be in the complete dark and then kind of wait and see what it looks like. This is also uh, a photograph that I love and I think has a very transcendent spiritual quality. And that's something that you can't will into existence. You can't say, this is what I want today. But if you're lucky, sometimes grace descends and you, you have some kind of magic that descends. And that's how my best photographs all happen. I, I don't will them into existence. I think one of the most memorable images that, that Joyce and I did was the contortionist picture. And uh, it was one of those days, it was like, I think it was the end of the day, and Joyce had been giving me direction and we just had a little bit of extra time and so she wanted to know if there was something that I could do that I wanted to do that maybe we hadn't done before and I told her that I could do contortions. So. So I can put the inside of my elbow up to my shoulder and I could, I could do all these things with my arms. So it just sort of came together and yeah, who knew? Who knew how iconic that would look? And, and the way that it was positioned on a pedestal was just sheer brilliance, I think. I think that was what made it incredible. The contortion was almost like a piece of sculpture sitting on a pedestal. And that's why I think it's so iconic. Before a shoot, I really prepare, sometimes for weeks, and I collect fabrics and props and, you know, I come to the studio with a couple students and suitcases full of things that I might use and spread them on, you know, tables around the studio. And then, as I have different people, I try to usually have four or five people that I'm shooting on the same day. And I love the synergy between the people and 
I, it creates a really relaxed atmosphere in the studio, believe it or not, to have different types of people ar around. And I remember those years when we'd have, you know, men, women, children, different colors, different shapes, and everybody got along and we ended up doing some great groups together. And I never know what's exactly going to happen. I think I'm like a great chef in sort of ways in that uh, a great chef will get wonderful ingredients and put them out. And they will always know they can make something professional and, and, and very good. But they never know if they're going to make something special, something that has never been done before, that becomes then a signature dish for them. I mean, that's, I think, a good al analogy for me. I never know. I prepare and prepare, you know, and, and then, but at the moment the, the, the shoot is taking place and I'm alone with that person, I never really know what's going to happen because that's the magic when I'm trying to elicit something below the surface and my subject and whether or not they can go on that journey with me to another, really another dimension. The collaborative process of working with photographer, you have to have absolute trust and the person that is in, in basic control of your image. I think that Joyce and I do have a spiritual connection, absolutely. I'm, I don't pretend to understand a lot of things in life. I'm a very down-to-earth, grounded person, but I know what I feel when we work together, and I know how special that is, and I know that it's intangible, but it seems to reach people on such a core level, I've had people that are just, I've met them on the streets in New York and they, they, you can tell, you can tell it's something that really touches people. I feel like Joyce and I were predestined to work together. I want to put it that way. And I feel like, you now I know that what we did together is the best work of my entire life as a model. and. I think that that just comes down to the fact that when I met her, I knew she was a really good person and just gifted with, on so many levels, like levels I don't even understand. So for me to be in her care is basically the way I would put it, I think, it, it was, was an absolute gift for me. Happy I am so glad to be doing this. Me it's too. Like, Dream oh. come true. Oh, I feel the same way. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. It's been a long, beautiful friendship. Well, you know, you're like a sister to me. I 